Welcome to the colour supplement lifestyle. Pleasant, manicured suburbs where everybody mows their lawns, trims their hedges and sends their children to genteel private schools. This is the world where having a BMW in your front garden says more about you than geraniums ever can. That BMW has penetrated the suburban psyche so deeply is no surprise. A winning confection of looks, performance and practicality, all nicely dressed up in a party frock. If the chattering classes didn't already have their BMWs, they'd have to invent them. The perfect car for the perfect lifestyle. Never has respectability been so fashionable. But behind this bourgeois idyll lies one of BMW's problems. Their products have become too pricey and the people who drive them too old. Apparently the average BMW driver is almost pensionable. Lots of disposable income, but the wrong side of 40. So their dealers have asked for an affordable car, something with some elfin charm to appeal to the hearts and pockets of a more youthful market. And this is their answer, the new 3 Series Compact. Very nice, but inside the actual car is really nice. I think it's very spacious and very safety cautious with them um, airbags in the front and a first aid kit in the boot. It is comfortable, it's very comfortable, it's a bit too small, I think. Good car, but not for men, it's definitely for women. It's all comfortable, and I think it would suit the children and the mummy and daddy. That truncated tail means that BM's new baby hatch is nine inches shorter than the standard offering. With 1.6 or 1.8 engines, prices start at 13,350 for the 316i, rising to 17,020 pounds for the 318ti Lux. ABS, driver's airbag and power steering are standard, plus you get a three-year warranty as well. In fact, it all sounds very beguiling, and I'm sure it'll sell for the bucket full. There's even a four-month waiting list. But the question everybody's asking is, can such a budget BM be the real McCoy? Surely there's been some penny-pinching. Will it really be as good as its big-money brethren? Actually, it's not as bad as people say, and you could never call it cheap and nasty. Sure, the dash is a wee bit plasticky, rides a bit fidgety, not quite as smooth as the saloon, and judging by the engine note, they've tried to save a few quid on sound deadening as well. But what do you expect for something that's two grand less than the equivalent three-series saloon? I must say, though, it is quite nice to drive. Gear change is very slick, engine's very responsive, drives very nicely indeed. In fact, you could almost think you were travelling really quite quickly indeed. But you'd be wrong. The compact might look like a hot hatch, but it isn't. Try pelting to 60 in the 1.6 version, and it'll take you a shameful 12 seconds. That's about the same as a Maestro diesel. But what about the handling? Because of that rear hatch, BMW have dusted off the back suspension from their old model, which had the reputation of being a bit tail-happy. Well, there's no slip sliding away here. When you push it to the limit, the compact hangs on and on. This is a well-sorted chassis with a very firmly glued-down rear end. So exactly how much is the BMW for the common man? Well, this one, the 318, TI, and that's the one you want, weighs in at 15,290. But since BMW persist in their absurd practice of charging extra for a radio, by the time you put a sunroof, music, some fancy wheels on it, you're going to be looking at 16, 16 and a half. So it ain't that cheap. But for reasons only a psychiatrist could explain, BMW buyers don't seem to mind paying extra for what should be standard. We asked the good people of Litchfield what they thought of the compact. I think my initial impression was that it looks like it's been chopped off at the back. Um, it's got the back end missing. It's not the normal shape of the BMW, so I didn't think it was very pretty. I didn't like the look of it. I don't know what BMW are trying to achieve by bringing this out, because hitherto we've always associated BMW as being a little bit upmarket from the Rover. Whereas it seems to me that BMW, if they're not careful, they're going to fall between two stores. The boot was slightly smaller than I expected. Um, the interior, a bit basic. 
but I actually like the look of the car. I think it's the sort of car you look at twice if it passed you. And um, overall, I think it's very nice. It, it, it would make a superb, uh, I hate to be sexist, uh, ladies' car or a teenage zap around, but not for me. It's not too bad. I'd boil one, definitely. So there you have it, a BMW for every man. The compact's rear end might look like it's been drawn by a particularly vicious cartoonist, but it's fun to drive, well-built, and should hold its value like a Van Gogh. But in the fine analysis, I think it is actually no better than your average quality hatchback. So if you want to get trammeled up with four-month waiting lists, or heavens forbid, pay a premium for one, then I think you're daft. Because the compact's good, but not that good. The compact's good, but not that good.